All right, let's have a seat. Let's talk space tech. So we've only got 20 minutes to talk about the infinity and beyond. So let's, let's see what we can accomplish. Uh, I just want to kick this off. Doing, doing the research for this panel, uh, and, I'll, and I'll remind all of you, in 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 and placed in Earth's orbit the first artificial satellite. Now, while the satellite was only in orbit for three months to the day, uh, this one single act changed the course of humankind forever. So to discuss the future of space tech, and particularly Europe's place in it, I'd like to invite my panelists. Please introduce yourself, tell us briefly, and I know you both do big, big things, so tell us briefly what, you, what you're doing in space. Thank you very much. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, my name is Bianca Cefalo. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Space Thoughts. It's a new space startup based off in London. And we are pioneering the in-space R&D of advanced materials. So basically, as much as you wouldn't test a rain jacket in the sun, you wouldn't test space materials on Earth. So what we do, we just test them in space. Fair enough. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, good. So I'm Vladimir Levikin. So I'm a founder and uh, CEO of Skyrora. Skyrora is a leading European launch company. So we do rockets and we aim to launch them from Scotland and launch satellites in space. That's what we do. And we're done. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bianca, my first question is for you. Uh, I, I saw an interview you did, or uh, read or saw, I've watched so much recently. Uh, you were recently quoted as saying, I say no to anything that doesn't support growth and well-being. Does that sound familiar? I got, yes. I got, got my source yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. good, good, good. <laughs> um, journey with me, if you will. Let's say a few years down the road, everything's going great. Um, how is the work of Space Dots helping people like this? You, me, everyone here. How is the work of Space Dots helping uh, in growth and well-being? Yeah, so that's that's a great that's a great question. So uh, I can give you a journey and how we can get there. So I was actually reading; it was last year. So we're all reading about the objective of the net zero by 2050 and how much everybody individually and as businesses we have to do. Obviously, we are just talking about this from a terrestrial perspective, right. but there is a space technology beyond Earth perspective. So if you think about the solar uh, power generation, so space-based solar power generation from space. Um, this is something that can actually help Europe as a whole, as a okay. giving more than 180 billion in benefits and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels if that actually happens. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we make it happen in the next whatever decades? So think about this huge generation of power from space that needs to be used on Earth as a renewable power generation. And this means that huge, like kilometers long structures need to deploy on different orbits. And speaking with these people in the UK and Europe who are doing this, none of them has the right materials to do that <laughs> because Basically, the foundation of everything doesn't exist, or it can't be produced at scale, or it has never been tested on the orbits that they will have to use. So basically, space thoughts creates a knock-on effect on everything that's benefiting art on the long term. So think about wanting to make some, a test that is more efficient, is faster, is cheaper. You can allow companies to produce materials at scale, not in 10 years' time, mm -hmm. but in a couple of years' time. You can allow them to produce them for space technology, sell them to the space industry, and then space industry goes off and does the magic that we're all telling about. So this is really the knock-on effect. It's like starting to create a sustainable building from the foundations. This is what we do. Okay, okay. Uh, Vlad, your Twitter bio I found very interesting. It reads, you are more interested in caring for the planet we already live on than populating a new one. Do, uh, do these thoughts resonate with you? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I believe that not only me, right, more interested to, to save our planet rather than travel somewhere and spoil and one more, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we in Sky Aurora and overall the whole uh, purpose of the new space companies is not only to provide internet to, to let us watch whatever Netflix better in the middle of nowhere and mountains and such, right? But actually look back on Earth and uh, we in Sky Aurora supply the, the vehicles for the Earth observation services to be able to spot and detect what is actually going wrong with our planet and who 
who is misbehaving, because most likely it's, it's going to be people who is doing wrong, right? <laughs> so who is misbehaving and where? And then, with the help of global whatever regulators and uh, and forces, to actually start to get things back in order finally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we believe that the new space it's a crucial part of the uh, you know this initiative to save our planet, mm -hmm. as well as you know. As, as a spin-off, we can travel, of course. Oh, no worries. Can, <laughs> All right, good. We can do Venice or whatever, France. Oh, France. Good. <laughs> France. Yeah, good. We can do Venice and Paris, yeah. Oh, good. You, you, you did just mention regulators. So let, let's, let's talk about that for a second. I mean, particularly here in Europe, particularly here in Brussels. Uh, I mean, historically speaking, the U.S., Russia, China, uh, you know, they've, they've been the ones that have grabbed the headlines, uh, which, which kind of makes sense. I mean, they're single massive entities, government-funded space programs. Uh, and I mean, you know, we can argue about bureaucracy in Europe all day long, but uh, a question for you both, I mean, how do you see the EU as being able to propel European contributions into uh, uh, the global space endeavors? It's a good question for both of us, based yeah. in the yeah. UK, right? So about Europe and bureaucracy. So do we want to start? Yeah, well, we, well, we, we just got, had we've this. Got UK, <laughs> we've got UK with Brexit and then Europe, right? <laughs> we just we just had this conversation just right before. Uh, but from from a, from my perspective, I can say that first of all, bureaucracy is, is like terrible everywhere. <laughs> so if I think about again, why materials for space don't really exist as much, or not all the advanced materials are used, is because the standards and the regulations and the quality control around them all are very sparse and they are not harmonized across Europe, US, Russia, China. Mm. Everybody does whatever they think they need to do for their own benefit, which means obviously there is more competition in between countries when actually space is beyond boundaries. So all of them should actually speak the same language. So this doesn't happen to this very day. This is going back to really the engineering stuff. And I think this is this is what is really happening is um, it's true that US and all the other powers uh, have more money, so mm. that, that's literally what happens. It's like you have more capital that you can inject in more innovative things. If you think about the capital from NASA and the one from the European Space Agency, they are like an order of magnitude or more different. Mm. So there is a lack of the same capital, which obviously helps, but there is also a lack of wanting to risk more. So. Europe has always been risk averse mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to technology or anything that goes a bit too much away from our comfort zone. Right. And if you just manage to let it go, obviously, from the regulation standpoint, mm -hmm. without obviously saying we're just going to do whatever we do, like many, many, many other founders in the States, we know one very famous, mm. that also doesn't work. Uh, it works for him, not for everyone. I, I told Vlad we wouldn't talk about that guy today. <laughs> Mr. <So>. Blue Tech. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but generally, I think there is, yeah, the lack of capital. It's been, uh, it's been addressed. There have been now way more European funds, especially mm -hmm. private funds that are investing in space tech and any other tech which is like at the frontier of making humanity thrive differently. Uh, but I think it's a mindset. Europe needs to let go of what it was and needs to actually understand wh where they want to go and let go of those how do we beliefs. How do we change that? How do we shift that mindset? How do, I, how do I do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? How do we all do it? Uh, uh, no, first of all, uh, with their war, right? So the only thing which is positive that we actually prove that we can actually execute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when decision is made, the bureaucracy can work for, for a purpose which was intended, right? Which is good. So we, the mindset been changed. Mm -hmm. There is the energy, mindset, and political will to do decision. And there is bureaucracy and process to place to execute them. So for ages, we, uh, we had lack of, let's say, um, serious calls mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be able to actually use all those me mechanisms in place. I, be, I strongly believe that you know, now we will work better. We as Europe, UK, and so on. On a top level to make a fast decision and on bureaucracy level to make, ex uh, to execute, to actually execute them in a proper way. Okay, okay, fair enough, good answer, I think. Um, let's shift, because, I mean, from what I was hearing, as you know, partially, there's money 
involved, right? Let's, let's, let's shift a little bit to commercialization, because I, I know this is a, a topic for both of you. Uh, space tech money ecosystem. How, how do we get a space ecosystem in place? I mean, we're literally thousands of kilometers away. How does that happen? So, uh, yeah, I, actually, I can say that uh, the space ecosystem or the space industry globally, it's much smaller than you think it is. In fact, everybody knows everybody, mm -hmm. uh, which is the great advantage of the space industry, because it's been kind of niche for a certain period of time, meaning we are really now at the cusp of what commercialization actually means. But so far, everybody's really well connected with everyone. So in a certain level, we space people do tend to talk with each other, mm -hmm. from the European Space Agency, a agencies in general, to the new space comers, to the old space. Well, by old space, we mean corporate that were generated from the Second World War or government, politics, whatever. Uh, now, because there are numerous businesses coming up with addressing different problems, there is even more willingness from everyone, because nobody can actually go into space alone. I will never be able to fly into space if I don't talk with a supplier that then is flying on a rocket that then is giving me back the data. And Skyroar needs something on their rockets to go up there. There right. you go. Right. So it means that doing a business in space tech on your own individually will never work. And then you will come to the regulation. So if you haven't spoken with the specific people who have to sign off your document to go into space, you'll never be able to do that. Not even the blue tick guy. I have that <laughs> insight. So uh, the space tech is actually very, very, very well connected. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope this is going to become even more connected as obviously more businesses are growing. So again, it's, it's funny when people think space industry is so unapproachable and it's so difficult to get in. You just need to know one person, and that person can introduce you to everyone, mm -hmm. quite literally. I mean, this is what happened to me. Very good. Uh, uh, yeah, I do agree. So we are quite a close community at the moment because we are small. The whole market is small. So it's just, uh, just start to emerge, right? So we had a conversation like a half an hour ago that I was telling that it's like deja vu, right? Because I was in the same position back back days when I work, used to work as a student for internet service provider. So it was very difficult. We all knew each other, right, mm -hmm, first mm -hmm. of all. Then it was very difficult to convince where them and explain where are the money, why I need money for, and why we should connect, and how the internet can bring money. So can you imagine? I, <laughs> you should remember, so we both should <laughs> I remember. remember. <laughs> you remember. So uh, it's, um, yeah, so pretty much the same right now. So would actually be the game changer, I hope. Uh, it's a Starlink project. Mm -hmm. Because that is the first project in new space, let's say, industry, whose aim to be pure commercial and start to generate serious uh, profit, mm -hmm. right? Which I believe, uh, apart from all this program, you know, government program, defense and everything, will be the first ever commercial, successful, I hope successful, mm -hmm. fingers crossed, uh, let's say, project which will inspire uh, everyone else, including, including then you know, the investors will come to the industry so, itself. And then the whole industry will start to grow, like yeah, inter I mean, that's internet back days. We need our eBay. You, you, are you building eBay? Uh, there is Elon Musk. Who? So Elon Musk, oh. uh, if you ever, uh, yeah, so he's doing very, very well in terms of Is he? not only the building <laughs> internet, but uh, trying to, to take it under his control completely. So <laughs> all right. he's doing inter internet wires and eBay all at once. Well, that's a good one. I got to remember that. All right, we have this on tape. Good. I got to remember that one. Listen, we are running out of time because I got to, apparently we're standing in the way of people having a coffee. So I got told to cut it a bit short, which is a shame. But we are here in Brussels. Uh, I, I, I want to imagine this, this audience is, is full of regulators. What are one or two points that you would address with, to EU regulators right now that would accelerate both of your businesses and get us into space faster? Uh, listen to the commercial people. Be brave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> listen to commercial people. Be brave. Space tech. Thank you very much.